Call, call this meeting to order, please. Um, we are, we the Board of Commissioners, wanted to bring this before you. We got a letter some time ago from the EPD <coughs> telling us that, that the, the main lake there, Melody Lakes, was subject to the Safe Dams Act requirements. The Safe Dams Act, which, uh, which they inspect dams uh, every year. Uh, and if they find a dam to be uh, a danger to life and or property uh, within a certain distance from that dam, downstream of that dam, they classify it as a Category 1 dam. Uh, a Category 1 dam then makes it fall under the auspices of the EPD and the DNR. Uh, and the conditions have to be, no if, they have to be uh, taken care of, they have to be acted upon in such a way that it is no longer a danger. Uh, it's obviously not something that's easy to get your, your head around. So we uh, engaged uh, our, our water engineers, uh, Carter and Sloop, Matt, Matt Smith from Carter and Sloop is here with us. And they in turn uh, wanted engaged uh, Carter Engineering to actually do the studies. Uh, we have two gentlemen here from Carter Engineering, Brian Kimsey and uh, Mr. Honeycutt, and they are going to explain to you what you see on the wall, and it ties in with the, the handout that you were able to pick up when you came in the door. Uh, these are the options that have been identified. We are bringing to you, and bring, they are going to explain to you each option so that you will have a, a, an understanding of that option. Um, some of them are rather costly. None of them are cheap. Uh, but we felt like you needed to, to see what the full array of those options were. And if we can. Uh, come up with something that, that might work that's uh, less expensive, certainly that, that would be on the table for you. Um, but it is, it is your neighborhood, uh, and you're going to be the ones most affected by this. So I, uh, and if any of the other commissioners wish to say anything at this point in time, uh, please feel free to do so. What, what we plan on doing letting these gentlemen explain each of those options to you. Let them go through all six of those options. Uh, and when they are through, we will then open the floor to questions or comments. Uh, normally, uh, when people are making presentations, they face the commissioners. Uh, these gentlemen will face you because they are, they are here for you uh, to answer your questions. So, if you would, uh, please give them the courtesy of making their full presentation, and then uh, certainly we will go forward and, and ask whatever questions you may have. With that, I will, uh, Matt, do you want to kick this off? Do you want to turn over to Brian? And just let Brian, go ahead, sir. Well, I will then call on Brian McKenzie and let him uh, explain to you exactly what these options are, and also soon you'll get into a little bit more, Brian, as to what the EPD requires. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. My name is Brian Kimsey with Carter Engineering We're out of Athens, Georgia. Um, we've worked with uh, Georgia State Dams for many, many years in, uh, in compliance issues on dams, upgrades, of structures, and um, this one's very similar to others we worked on. So uh, we'll go through the kind of back, a little bit of background information for you. Uh, I don't know if I can see this or not, but I'll, I will read them so that if you 
can't see it. Um, the Melody Lakes Dam um, is regulated by Georgia EPD. It's a safe dams program. It's a division of the Environmental Protection Division of Georgia DNR. Um, it is identified by safe dams as a Category 1 dam, which means there's a potential loss of life if this dam breaches. A dam has to be, by definition, in the state of Georgia, if it's 25 feet tall and or impounds or stores 100 acre feet of water. Not 100 acres, but the storage volume is 100 acre feet of, of volume. That is what defines it as a dam. So the Melody Lakes Dam is 26 feet tall, which is over that threshold. And it also, at the top of the dam, impounds or stores behind it 285 acre feet. So that's what puts it in a, regu in a regulatory um, classification. And then from that point, it's classified by safe dam as being either high hazard or low hazard. Category one being high hazard, category two being low hazard. This one is category one by their definition. Georgia uh, safe dams, they inspect dams, uh, all the high hazard dams in the state um, every few years. Um, it's now changed a little bit to where uh, consultants like myself will do the inspections for them, uh, but they still do inspections. And back in March uh, 2017, one well, of the latest inspections that they completed on, on this, uh, this dam, they came back with a list of deficiencies, that, the typical deficiencies, the slopes too steep, there's a little bit of, um, there's some trees on the dam, it's just normal maintenance issues. But at that point, they, they stated that the, uh, the county must submit a permit application, or the owner, I should say the owner, must submit a permit application package within 180 days from that, from that time, which would have put it December 28, 2017, or face significant monetary fines um, and penalties. So prior to that deadline, the commissioners have been working on this. Um, we asked for an extension for them and, and George Safe Dams program granted that extension uh, to be able to finish the study and come up with the alternative that would be best um, for the dam. Carter Engineering was, was then retained um, by Carter and Sloop, two separate Carter, two separate Carters, but uh, uh, we were retained by Carter and Sloop to do a compliance option report. Basically, that means we look at the at the dam itself hydraulically. We see what um, what we think will make this um, to be able to upgrade this structure to be to meet the regulations set forth by Georgia Safe Dams. In that report, we came up with six alternatives. The, com the commissioners have met and discussed this project at ten meetings, um, dated back as far as February. Uh, 2017. So 10 separate meetings they've discussed this. Um, not the option report, but just the, the project itself, the dam itself. We presented, the Carter Engineering presented the compliance report to the Board of Commissioners in August, and then we came back in September, at the September meeting, to, uh, to further explain. There's a lot of information to it, uh, as you'll see today, and we came back in September time to talk about it. When we look at design alternatives or upgrade alternatives, there are several factors that we look at. And this, is, this doesn't mean for just a, a municipality, it could be an individual landowner that we look at. The, what are the cost effectiveness of the options? Um, what kind of impacts does it have on the property owners themselves? Um, you know, an alternative might be to, to, to lower the dam, or an alternative might be to raise the dam uh, and provide more storage. And so what impact does that have on the surrounding Landowners. Are there any environmental impacts by whatever option we choose? Um, we have to go through other environmental agencies. How does it affect traffic? In this case, there's a road across the dam. What's the effects that that, that has that the option, uh, the upgrade option, um, um, has on traffic? What kind of project timeline that we foresee happening? Uh, if it's a very severely um, um, instance where the dam might breach suddenly, um, your project timeline is important because then you don't want to have that, that, that dam breach. What kind of safety considerations that we might have 
and then any other regulatory requirements. So those are the, the items we look at when we look at these alternatives. So a couple things that were completed in order for us to do our um, our job that we were hired to do. Um, the existing conditions had to be studied. And so we needed to know exactly how tall the dam was. We needed to know exactly what the slopes of the dam were, uh, how big the, the, the pool is, the water, the water line of the pool. Um, so a field run topo survey, topographic survey was completed on the dam for use in the report. And it's called a bathymetric study, but it's basically just a study, a topographic map of the pool bottom. Is what that bathymetric study is, and that was completed as well, uh, so that we knew exactly how deep it was um, in, in all areas of the lake. It's very hard to see, but on the back, we've got on a couple spots here existing conditions. This shows the bathymetric study and the contours of the uh, of the lake itself. So inside the boundary of the lake, it shows the contours. If you're if you're curious about. Um, areas that you're familiar with. <clears throat> so after after looking at the uh, at the existing topographic study and the bathymetric study, um, we completed a hydraulic study of, of the existing structure, and then we looked at typical upgrade alternatives from a very high cost to as low as possible cost, and still meet the regulations that. Are imposed by state dams. So again, we're we're trying to meet something that the state has set forth. Um, it's part of the law. It's required, and um, and that's what we're trying to meet with these alternatives. So every alternative has pros and cons with with each of them. And so that's what we we try to <coughs> identify for the commissioners are, are the, the pros and cons of each alternative. So we'll go through each alternative, and then once I finish. Uh, you can ask questions about them. They're on the on the boards, listen on, on both sides of the room too. And, uh, we'll be around the talk even after the meeting if you have questions after that. So alternative one is um, what we call a labyrinth weir spillway. It's a concrete chute spillway, typical concrete chute, but it's got what we call a labyrinth weir, and that's the shape of a labyrinth. It's like a little salt tube in there. And what that does is we've got, to, we've got to pass so much water in this system to meet safe dams. We compress that weir into these sawtooth forms. It lets us pass more water. So it's a cheaper alternative than just putting in a 200-foot wide spillway. So we've compressed it down to a 50-foot wide concrete chute with this sawtooth weir in place. For this alternative, there's no change to the current water level. It'll stay exactly like it is today. There's no change to the top of dam elevation. It'll stay exactly like it is today with one exception. The road would be closed because it's an open, it's an open channel. So you can't drive across the open channel. You could bridge across it, but that would add a lot more money to that, to that cost system. <clears throat> the dam would still remain a category one regulated dam. It just means that we are currently meeting the regulations. So if the law changes, and those regulations change, it's still regulated. You still would have to meet those, whatever the new requirements might be. It also means that you're doing inspections every every quarter, um, and any maintenance issues on the dam, you'd have to have to keep keep up with those maintenance items. The cost estimate for this preliminary cost estimate um, was close to a million dollars, nine hundred thousand dollars. That assumes a twelve month construction schedule. Now, it's a it's a preliminary estimate. It could be low. It could be high. Um, it all depends on the cost of concrete, the cost of steel. There's a lot of factors involved. You know, how busy are the contractors? So um, we've tried our best to imply, uh, apply a, a level of um, safety factor of cost, but it still could be higher than this cost. And that cost does not include the bridge. That cost does not include the bridge, that's correct. So all these maps show, as you'll see on the wall over here, we have option one to be in the lower um, right hand corner, let's say water stage. That shows you the level of what it would be. So this is an easy one because it's, it doesn't change. The water level stays exactly what it is. So there's two, uh, two main lines on there. There's a blue line, which is the water line. And there is a, I think it's an orange, uh, an orange line on there. It may be green. Um, 
And that shows what the maximum water level would get to during this large storm event that Safe Dams makes us design for. So I didn't talk about that, but let me mention that. Safe Dams has what they call the, the probable maximum precipitation. It's 30 inches of rain for this area, 30 inches of rain in six hours. So that's what you're designing for, a percent of that. So this dam here, it was a 50% PMP. So 15 inches of rain in six hours. That's a lot of rain. It's just it's what we're required to do. We, we don't have, we can't dispute uh, what that what that amount is. Hmm? Alternative two uh, decreases the cost a little bit. It still keeps the um, water level the same, but it raises the top of the dam about two and a half feet. There's a, there's, there's a slope to the top of the dam right now. One end is higher than the other. So that basically it levels the dam. That's what we're talking about doing. So we're not raising the whole dam two and a half feet. It's just that one side. We're, we're raising that side up. So it's consistent across the top. <clears throat> this is what we call a drop box spillway. It's just a concrete riser box. Water flows over that, drops into, and it flows under the dam in two box, <coughs> two box culverts, concrete box culverts. It's really simple setup. Um, <coughs> the dam still remains a Category One dam, so your water level would not change on this option. Um, and the preliminary cost estimate is seven hundred thousand dollars. It also assumes a twelve-month construction schedule because you've got to notch the dam. Basically, put the to put the box culverts in. It's, it's, it'll, it'll take a while to, to construct that. Right. So, pardon? Road stay open. I'm sorry. Yes. Road That's road, road stay open. open. Road stays open on this option. Yes. Uh, as, you, as you notice here, the, the blue line stays the same. It's the same water level. The um, the green or orange. I think that one is. The green or orange line is the flow flow level. Alternative three. Um, the picture you see here, this is kind of, there are several um, federal government watershed structures in the area. And they have a riser system similar to this. It's, it's a little cheaper than, than the other box coal, uh, box coal type riser. Um, drop box. This riser here is a six by twelve box. It's got a it's a covered top. Um, and uh, it, it would flow through it into a 60 inch round reinforced concrete pipe to the dam. That's a more typical, this is a more typical type um, design that if we were building new, we might go with this, with this option here. Um, what this one requires though, is the water level would have to be lowered by one foot, at least one foot. The top of the dam would still have to be raised, <laughs> so one end would have to be raised two and a half feet. To, to be level across, um, and it would remain a Category One dam. So it would it would change the regulation, but the road would still be intact, um, and um, it's a little bit cheaper than the other. Preliminary estimate is six hundred fifty thousand dollars for this option. It's very. Um, if you look at the bathymetric study, one of the things that um, you'll notice on the edges around that lake, it's, it's really pretty steep. So those of you that live around it, if you were to jump off into the water, it's, it's pretty steep slopes on the, edge of the, on the edge of the water. So if you lower the water level a few feet, you're really not going to notice a lot of difference in that. Now if it was really flat and you lower the water a couple of feet, it would, the water level would go way out of way from current, current water level. So, uh, that's the good thing about the if you if you lower the water level uh, based on the existing conditions, it, it doesn't affect the look, the aesthetics of that um, that water line. The water line. It's pretty low right now. It's pretty low. It's pretty low. The water line. Down where it's a drop. That's a two foot drop. Right now it's it's a <coughs> lower than that. Really? That's every leg out there. Because it's just because the drought, drop and it's 30, 30 inches of rain. People ain't going to be worried about moving the lakes. They ain't going to be worried about everything on that Chattanooga River. I agree. I agree. 30 inches, 31 inches of water. That's a lot of water. They ain't got a pine lake and all of them. I can't take 30 inches. Let me go through the rest. Let's hold the comments if you would, please, till we get through. Sorry about that. That's all right. Let me go through the rest of the 
Alternative four is, is a, a little different option of alternative two that we saw. Uh, the difference is it's a little cheaper because we use a smaller system, smaller pipe, smaller rider, smaller box culverts. It lowers the water level by two feet. Um, there's no change in the top of the dam elevation. It stays exactly like it is now. It still remains a category of one dam. Cost is $665,000. Preliminary cost is $665,000. <coughs> The road stay the road the road stay All right, so alternative five. Um, basically, this one is drain the lake completely. There'll be no pool there. Uh, the road stays. The dam is lower. You have, in order to meet that dam's criteria, you got to remove the hazard downstream or remove that potential for hazard. So the dam will be lowered. So the ends will be still high like, like they are now. You'd, you'd go across it like a like a normal road over a box culvert uh, that you you know over a stream. So it will become a stream basically, back to the same end or stream it was years ago with no pool. Um, so the lake level is permanently lowered. The lake site returns to natural stream. The existing road is lowered, um, and the dam is no longer regulated by Georgia State Dam. So you never have to worry about safe dams anymore. Uh, it's, it's no longer regulated. Preliminary cost on that is $490,000. And the last alternative is to remove the lake and breach the dam. So that this option here is kind of the least cost, it's the least costly of all. You're leaving a not you're notching the dam completely. Uh, the road goes away. There's no road to be closed on both sides. And um, and there'll be no, no, be no lake there. Um, so this, and, and again, it will be no longer regulated by Georgia State Parents. So the cost of this one is 430000 And it's a typo. That's a typo. Sorry. $230,000. And that eliminates the road, right? That eliminates the road. So they Um, if you eliminate the road, we just threw this up there to show I mean, you're familiar with the area. There, are, there is a way to access both sides of the pool um, from the main road you ever driven if, a, if a dam was completely removed. <clears throat> but it shows, it just shows that. So the next steps will be the Board of Commissioners will consider the best alternative. A decision is tentatively scheduled for October 16, 2018. All right, so, questions? You said that the uh, DNR regulates dams is 25 feet and higher. 25 this dam is 26 feet and higher. There's no alternative to dropping that dam below that. That's 25 feet. That's a good question. One and a half feet and make it 21 and a half feet and get it out of the category. That's a good question. So there's two, two, two answers for that. One answer is it still it still has over 100 acre feet of storage. So it's a it's an and and more and more. Oh, yeah. okay. But that is a good question. In in other instances, we've had that question before. St. Dam won't just let you come in there and lower the dam and be unregulated because that hazard still exists downstream. So if you were to lower the dam below, what a breach would it inundate that hazard, then that is perfectly acceptable to do that. Absolutely. And leave some pool, whatever that is. It may be a five acre pool or a eight acre pool, whatever that is. Tell them what the pool is now. The pool is 14 acres right now in size. Oh, 14.3 or something like that, based on the survey that we had. 16.1. Sixteen point nine. Thank you. Sixteen point nine is the actual current um, acreage of the pool and the current volume storage of the pool. St. Dam says it was two hundred and eighty-five, but based on the study, it's one hundred and forty-four acre pool. So if we remediate the dam and get it to regulations, we can petition for it to be dropped from a category one. That's correct. And then we don't have to be viable for it anymore. No as long as and if it doesn't get dropped down to a category one, then I can be trained to do the quarterly reports and it's only got to be checked every four years. 
You're saying it still remains a category one? Right. Yes. I talked with David Griffin with Safe yes. Ground. So. Yes. You, you, an individual can do a, a quarterly inspections themselves. Every two years, an engineer has to do it. Every four after it gets it the first two. That's what he told me. But you got to do quarterly reports. That's right. That, there's criteria to make it. That's right. It could be cost effective that way anyway. That's right. I forgot who's next. I think you were next. Uh, yes, sir. I just. Used to work for the volunteer fire department until we got shut down. And uh, but we used to clean that thing, that drainage in the cellar. Every time we had a bad storm, so it'd stop up and then start to flow, flow the road and wash the road. And uh, since they abandoned the uh, fire department, uh, there's nobody to do it. Now. That I think that's what's wrong with it. Well, it may be a, that may be a maintenance issue, but it's not what's driving the safe dams criteria. Well, you were talking about the water overflowing the road. Yeah, yeah but during that heavy storm, that, that 15 inches of rain in six hours, what you designed, it, it wouldn't matter if that pocket was completely clogged. It still got over top of the dam. It's the dam of our houses will go down if that lake's gone. And uh, the firemen always used to come on that other dam here, one in front of the lake, and they'll practice and they'd get their water there for their fire trucks. And I used to watch them on Saturdays, and all the animals come around, and all the ducks and geese and everything, too. They, they like that lake. Right. That's what we're hearing out there now. Uh, the dam in question was uh, the lake that's outlined, right? The one that's on Bear's property and how Mr. Jones's property. Correct. That's the dam. That's that correct. We're referring to. That's okay. correct. What's going to happen to all of the, the, the lakes upstream of that? Of that no, none of those dams currently, currently are regulated. Regulation. Are, re are regulated. Are regulated. That's right. Okay. I think you got your hand up next. What is the difference between the lake, what the lake would look like, look like between five and six? No difference. There's no pool at all. One, one of them's got a road across it, the other one doesn't. But you have a use and a road you can talk about this. Yeah, both options it removes the lake. Worst case scenario, if it becomes a stream, who owns the property on either side of that stream and who's going to control who has access to that property? That's the question I can't answer. I can't answer that either other than to say that the current, the current properties surrounding that lake only go up to the edge of the, of the current lake. So the lakes themselves, uh, that's common property. Uh, it was owned by the Homeowners Association which, as you well know, is no longer. How many years ago was that? Yeah. I, I have a, a history in, from 1962 on from Melody Lakes through my family and other ways. Uh, and you've been out and when Ski Lake went down because somebody damaged the thing on it. And at that time, you were pretty frank about it. The county's not going to do anything. And I'm looking out my front at a ditch and I'm watching all the drunks and everybody driving their cars around the ditch and they're out there at all hours of the night causing all kind of problems and basically Harris County did nothing. The, 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 I fixed the dam out of my pocket. It's the only reason that we had to pull before. And it's not the last time they broke the drain on that dam. And I don't want to see my neighbors above me have to put up with all of the shenanigans that are going to go on when you just open that up to whoever cares to get out there on their four wheelers and their jeans and whatever else. I, I, I have several questions. I'm sure everybody does, but uh, my, my question would be to the council. If uh, the option to drain this lake does occur, What's going to be done to the property to improve it? Because it's going to be a mosquito pit. It's going to be a muddy, nasty, it's going to look 
like Venezuela or something in this thing comes. Fill it in and make a park. I'll answer a little bit. In the cost estimate that we've got, there is there is money there to dress up the pool area so that water drains out properly. Um, it's still going to be, there still could be some sediment that has deposited over the years that will be left that have to be vegetated. Um, but the, there is money there in those two options to do some work. This, this is going to completely ruin the aesthetics and, and the homeowners, uh, the things that these folks will work for their entire lives. Yeah. I, I, my, I, I just found out in your answer that the lake that my property is on is not affected because it's not under that regulation. It doesn't meet the requirements to be regulated. Yeah. But some of these folks, they have worked there. I know Mr. Jones, he's, he's family. Uh, I know a lot of these folks have worked their lives and very brand new to the community. He didn't buy that for a creek running through the back. He bought it because there's a lake there. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and I understand, and no disrespect intended, but honorable council members, this isn't your home. This, this, this is the home that these guys have lived on for, for several years. I inherited my property from my father. My father bought that property because it is a beautiful, beautiful lake. And like the, the nice lady said, it, 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 if you hadn't walked out on porch and watched those geese fly in and out with a cup of coffee in the morning, you had to live. That's what we're there for. And that's, what we, that's, that's why I kept the property. I, I bought that property from my mother before she passed away to keep it in the family. Uh, it, it meant a lot to my mom and dad. They used to go out there on the weekends and fish with the grandkids. I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing the same thing. And, and it means a lot to a lot. So this is a pretty emotional thing for folks to see the, the, those things go away. And, you know, a, a few farmers back in 1925 with a couple of horse-drawn tractors and a two-by-four, they built those dams. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's unconscionable that we can't find something, another alternative and possibly even a cheaper alternative or, or someone who will do it cheaper. Uh, because, I mean, no disrespect to the contractor here today, but, you know, uh, put it up for bid. Throw the scope of work out there, and this is what we're expecting to happen, and, and throw it out for bid. We do it every day. And, and, and I promise you, people will be fighting for those jobs. I think the numbers could possibly come down. I don't know who got these numbers. I don't know where they came from. But I have to question whether it was put out for me. Because I've never heard nothing about it. It, it, it was not put out. This is, not, this is a preliminary, this is a preliminary estimate at this point. And, and forgive me, this is kind of you know, it's, it's emotional to a lot of folks. It's our home. And we're and, just the engineers that would give you the estimate, we would in turn put it out for bid for contractors to get a price and the commissioners would see the lowest price that they could get from that. Yes. I'll take the other. Okay. Due to this, I've got two questions. And I'll ask you the easy one first. Is are we here to give you an opinion of what we think is the best option? Number two, who's picking up the tab? <laughs> Number one is we wanted to give all of you folks, the ones that are not here tonight, the residents, to have an opportunity to look at six options. Um, for you to, among yourselves, decide which option you want. Uh, and as, as far as who's picking up the tab, uh, the county has paid to have this study done, uh, but it is not the county's property. It is not the county's responsibility. <laughs> by the former homeowners association. There ain't one. There ain't one. There is one. There is a one. Is it your name on the deed? No. No? Really? No. I think it should be. Since what, 1989? No. Does when the won't... county own it by prescription once they pay it? The county owns the road. How can you own the road? That's what I'm going to do. How can you own the road without owning the town? You took the town when you took the road. Y'all put yeah. water lines across the road and tore the dams up with cheap water lines. How did you do that? 
That's quite high for Carl's sake. It's busted several times. They don't use a, a, a good grade of pipe, and the kind of one put all that stuff in there. They went over and put a pipe about this big around the side grain, and they don't maintain that. And when you get the dam out, now I'm going to ask you to go ahead and deal man about this because I feel funny. When you take it out, are y'all going to dig down far enough for the core of that dam? And you're going to have to let the dam below it to do it, to get the core out where that dam and water will drain out. Because as long as that door, of course, is level with the ground, the water is going to stay back north of it. And he knows that. And there ain't no way unless you drain the dam below it and tear the core out to drain that swamp. And you're going to have to do that. I know the after the core is put in a dam to hold the water. The lower, it seems like it'll have to be lower to do the construction if it were breached. If the, if the melody lets down was breached. Well, how much is the core y'all going to take out? We don't know because we, we have a, we have a, the design is not complete at this point. So. But you know it's got to come out to drain that area and there. it's going to be a swamp. All up the deck and you get that core out. That's correct. What if the dam was in Cumber Lake? Now, would y'all be willing to spend the money to fix that dam? No. Because of what? Well, then what's the problem? Is it the money that the county don't have the money to fix the dam? That's part of it. And really? part, part of it, the, the money that we do have is taxpayer money. That's part of yours, but it's also every other well, we city. Yeah. The so you wouldn't fix a dam in Cumber Lake? No. Why? It's not ours. It's owned by the homeowners association, okay. and they maintain. Well, we don't have the homeowners association anymore. So I mean, y'all bought the roads. No, we did not buy the roads. Really? You just took them over. Huh? We, we paid the road to to, to to because if you don't own it, how do you pay it? Because the, we were approached to do to pay it to, if we would do it by the residents of, of Melody Lake. I'm sorry? I said that was gratitude that y'all did that? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> when I called, they told me that Harris County owns the roads and they took three dams when they took that property. That they own the roads and they took three dams. Now that's the... That, those are the facts, but the thing of it, is there not squash for drive, for roads and stuff like that that you can't get a, a grant of some type to help do this? I've been understood that, that we need to open the home office association and the three people that are sitting here pay for this. Because the county doesn't want to spend the tax dollars on people who don't pay their taxes or pay away or pay enough taxes. We pay what we are, are living to pay for taxes. And the buses and the garbage trucks come through there and they use that dam. It's like Wayne said, they ran water lines that were no good that leaked for two years. The county did not come and fix them. That's why the, that dam's been there since I was crawling in diapers. I have pictures of me crawling in diapers next to that lake. There was nothing wrong with that dam. 20 years ago, the county took it and they've done nothing to come out and repair that. But if it was over in Pine Mountain, it would already be fixed. I'll ask, I'll answer this, what your, what your, one of your comments. There are three lakes that I know that are category one. One is on Pine Lake that the uh, homeowners have maintained that for years. If anything happened, that they would be responsible for it. The other one is Piedmont Lake, which is Category 1 dam. At the present time, they are saving money in their homeowners association to correct it themselves. Did the county take over their rights? No. But you have taken over the ones out in the other place. Y'all did that. Some of them. Not all of them. 
Not all of them, but just Melody Drive, which is one of the stamps on Harris County. We maintain some of the roads in Melody Lakes. To my understanding, and that's one of them. To my understanding, that's that's the roads that are asphalted that the county maintains. No, not all of them. No, they don't maintain. Not all. Now, you say the county took over the roads, but there's a process for doing that. And let me just, since I live right there in Ellerslie and I was principal at Pine Ridge and know the children and families who lived in Melody Lakes for a long time, there were, the school buses could not come in there. The roads did not belong to the county. There were huge potholes. There were lots of maintenance issues. There was nobody to repair the roads, and the citizens came to their commissioner at the time, who was Mr. Buddy Hobbs, many of you still remember him, yeah. and petitioned the commission to take over the roads. It wasn't like the Harris County Commission woke up one day and said, let's go take the roads to Melody Lakes. The no, citizens, the residents, the residents of Melody Lakes petitioned the commission to please take the roads and maintain them. So the commission took some of the roads to maintain and pay them so that down. school buses could go down there, so that garbage trucks could go in there. So it's not a matter of, in your talking about taking over the roads, the residents petitioned for the roads to be repaired. I mean, I appreciate the fact that the, that the county has done something with the roads. The problem here now is, is that they're wanting to drain something that they want to take the easy road out. Well, we need help to figure out how to do this so they don't drain that lake because that's our livelihood over there. Those lakes. That's, I mean, it, it we means. We understand. Yeah. It's, yeah. My, it's my understanding that if the county had not accepted ownership of that road, so the county owns the road. Right. <laughs> the county accepted ownership of the road. Therefore, the state has said the county is responsible for the dam. Now, what my point is, if the county had not accepted the roads, then this entire matter would be on the residents completely of uh, Melody Lakes. And it's also my understanding that if nothing was done, the state would come in, drain the lake, and then assess the homeowners and property owners of Melody Lakes, and you would be paying for it out of your pockets for years and years. That's the, the other side of the coin now. So in a way, you're fortunate that the county does have this work. I'm going to stand up because nobody will pick up us because y'all just stand up there and look at us with all our hands up. But don't point to anybody. Okay. So, here we go. My question is, what is the total budget for Harris County for the year? Total budget. Somebody's got to know what they're doing. Roughly $24 million. $24 million. Total. So, that makes $1 million. What percent of that budget? About four percent. Which I know Harris County has spent a lot of money in a lot of other areas on things that aren't even used. I get around this county a lot. So it would be nice if they would try to help us in this situation. And like she said, the county did take over. What year was that when the county assumed ownership of the road? Well, 87? 90? You assume the ownership of it, yeah. Ownership of it. I know you don't want to say you own it, but that's what you can say. Well, we, we agreed to pave it, and we have to maintain that pavement. But the roads under that pavement are not sure I have to get them out of the I think you're just wrapping No, I'm not grasping. That's like you own a piece of property, you can tell anything. It don't matter what they say. Major property owners, Harris County Board of Commissioners. I'm just asking. Yes, I'm not. Wait, this gentleman's got the floor. Let him I'm just asking. I know you don't want to say you own it, but that's what you can say. That's just me personally, because I think it would look better. 
you know, if it's draining, my other theory is, and I don't know how other people feel about this, but if you do one, you close the road. Then if you do six, you close the road. That could help some issues in there with only leaving one way in and one way out on each side of the dam. Because there are other issues in there with not as many desirable people as there should be, and drugs and other stuff. And it's hard to get the county sheriffs down there to do something about it. But if there's one way in, one way out, there's nowhere to run. The school bus can go in and go around. I mean, the school bus can't turn around. Come in there. It didn't use this is like emergency wow. services for. Wow. So I mean, it's just stuff I'm throwing out there. I, you know, I've only been in there like four years. So I mean, all of this is way before my time. That you guys started on this before. Oh, this I mean, before okay. I understand that, but the county, you you don't want to say the county on the road, but quite frankly, they do. No, we don't. So if I tear the pavement out, we maintain the road. We do not own the house. Well, who owns the road? Who pays taxes on the homeowners association? There is no homeowners association. So what do you know about the road? Answer me what you can do about the homeowners association. So everywhere a homeowners association fails, that's it. Well, I don't understand what happens to the roads everywhere a homeowners association has failed. When you come in and pay them, you're telling me you didn't take ownership of that. But you did. I mean, ultimately. Whether you officially did or not, okay, is a different story. But you did take ownership of it when you assumed to pay that road. Period. That's just how it is. And I don't mean to be mean, but I mean, if I picked up the stick alongside the road, I guess I own the stick. I, I don't have, I mean, I really don't thing. have the legal answer to that. I don't know if we, we, we not find out what we, the legal answer is. We have looked at that, and we will still look at that. Uh, it, it should be very hard. It, 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 it is our responsibility to maintain the road. The Melody Lakes Ranch Club Association did this council such a, a huge favor for many, 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 many years. Uh, the council, the, the, the county was responsible for virtually nothing there for a long time. So it's it's reasonable to, to think that the citizens of Melody Lakes would come up and ask the county after how many years to throw a little bit of asphalt in a few potholes. That, that's very reasonable. And I'm not trying to be argumentative here, but how many years of taxpayer dollars did this county collect? Along when with, we were, along when, when this, yeah. when these folks and my father got no services from the Harris County years. whatsoever. And if the roads, sir, with all due respect, don't belong to you, what are your police officers doing on it? If it's still Melody Lakes Ranch Club, because the old ranch club, they didn't patrol that area. And that's where all these dope heads and everything came from that this gentleman was speaking of. Because Harris County did zero for Melody Lakes Ranch Club. My brother-in-law had barbecue dinners at the old, old fire department and everything and, and, and to raise money to get the pool up and running for the kids. To fix the roads. There have been countless and countless, countless fundraisers. These folks have taken care, they have taken the burden of those lakes off of you fine people for so many years. Because now my next, now my next, because it wasn't yours. Yes, ma'am, as Melody Lakes Ranch Club. The club has, 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 has disappeared. It belongs to you now. But the county, no, no, so the county doesn't assume ownership of, of something just because the okay, well, homeowners yes, just because the homeowners association is defunct, that does it's not honest. transfer any ownership or responsibility to the county. Now, one thing that's different in Melody Lakes is that 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 was designed as a private. Entity. A private, exactly. That's right. A private entity, not as a subdivision uh, that you see in a lot of other subdivisions that are designed to have public streets. That's the way it was wanted. It was designed and wanted to begin with when the people initially invested in it yes, and ever since. So the county cannot improve privately owned property. That's the law. Yes, ma'am. Melody Lakes petitioned the courts that that is a private entity 
a, 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 a homeowners association run entity. They did. Again, ma'am, that no longer exists. But even though it doesn't, that doesn't shift the word to the county. It's in Harris County, ma'am. It does not. It's the county does not have. It can't go on to private property and fix up your house. That's the same thing as fixing up property if that's This was the first one since 2006. Can I ask you five folks a question? All right, nobody's trying to, to, to put every single dollar on your pocket. No. I, I wouldn't, I don't, I'm speaking for myself, folks. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to ask and find out what portion can this council step up to the plate and help us to make this right, to make things better. What can you do? What can you do? I'm asking. We have not addressed that issue because we wanted to bring this before you uh, to see what needs to be. Uh, I heard that comment. Yes, we do want to help. That's why we brought these folks in here to find out what kind of problem there was. What was the, what way could we get around this issue or deal with this issue? Uh, so no, we have done something. And for the folks that are saying the county has done nothing for Melody Lakes. I know when I first assumed office, and Elder you know, Lakes was in my territory, and we ran a lot of water lines in the Elder Lakes that were, did not exist there in the beginning. So we have done some things for Elder Lakes, but we, the county does not step in in, in uh, residential subdivisions or anything else. The county is, does not have the responsibility to do anything in that unless we own, unless we have the roads were deeded to the county, and the county maintains the road. Uh, it's both things, uh, so we do keep that up. Sure, if the water line goes bad, uh, you, you pay uh, your water bill, so the water department's going to come out and, and look and see what it is. And what Sir, that's their responsibility. Paying on taxes on, 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 on the Harris County procedure. Do what? That's no different than us paying our taxes to operate our vehicles on city streets either. It, 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 it's maintained. If we pay our taxes, it's no different than that water line. We're paying taxes for, for those roadways also. Uh, just, just like you got. Um, again, you're paying for all the services that the county provides. Yes. Right. And, and, and that's my point, sir, is to see what this kind of council can step up to the plate and say, hey, this is how this is the portion that we can help you because there's some smart folks in this room. There's some engineers in here. There's some hardworking folks, and they have done it all by themselves for many, 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 many years. I guarantee you, you give me a backhoe and a few pieces of concrete, I'll fix that down. I'll fix that down. Um, and I guarantee you, these folks have been out there with struggles helping me out. But my question is, what portion of this help can you offer? We're not asking you for a million dollars. I'm not. I'm asking for help. Because we don't want to see this place go away. I don't want to step out and sink up to my ankles in mud. I don't want to see the birds migrate somewhere else. And I don't want to see those four-wheelers riding around in my front yard. I don't want to see the dope heads move back in there. And it's getting cleaned up. And I want to tell you something. I appreciate your county police officers and your sheriffs Amen. Thing coming out there Amen. and helping Protecting us to get those Pardon my friend, half asses out of those lakes. I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart because I'm almost 60 years old. I work at the Kia complex and I'm about to retire here in just a few more years. I've been buying since I inherited my father's property. I bought three more adjoining properties. I almost I own almost the whole side of one lake. The most beautiful property you've ever laid eyes on. It's an ugly little old trailer right there, but I'm thinking about mowing that thing down and putting me a pretty house in privacy. I don't want a muddy creek out in front of my yard. Okay. Mr. Lyon, can you let me know when the dam was inspected prior to 39, 17, and at that time, what was the, did it all of a sudden become a problem? I don't have that date. 2006. 2006. So we went for 11 years without 12. inspecting it? Now that's 20. Well, we were without inspection. 
the state inspection? Yes, ma'am. State the first state you first DPD inspection you had was in 2006. I got that from David Griffin by email. The second was in 2007. Nothing's been done. What I would like to recommend and ask is that we form a task force with you and whoever else you choose and a couple of the shareholders, Brian Kempsey, and let's get together and work on this thing because when I talk to David, you can oversee the work. You don't necessarily have to have your engineering company do it. You can oversee it. Like all them trees that's eight inches in diameter and less, we can cut them down. And then when it comes to an engineer needing to be involved, then we get you and you oversee the project. It don't have to be as expensive as what we're saying. And the outreach is representing kind of the homeowners right now until something else can be formed. And we're seeking funds to pay the taxes from now on, from going forward. But I don't think it's right for me to pay something that somebody else did back in the 90s and it had no action been taken on it. So if we could get a task force and let's reason together and work this thing out to where it helps everybody, I don't want to see us torn apart any more than we already are. I want to start seeing our county come together. I love this place. God gave me that place where I'm at, and that's why I'm running my mouth as much as I am. So I just wanted to get that out on the floor. So it seems to me that your biggest thing up is a dollar amount. That's what everything comes back to. It costs this, this is too much, this is what it costs. But we don't know in, in reality what it's going to cost you because it hasn't been put up for bid, correct? That's so. correct. We just haven't asked. Okay. So, so are, are we going to seek bids before we make a final decision or are we just going to make a final decision and seek bids on that decision? I'm sorry, sorry. I'm asking the commission well, this uh, question. Well, I've got the answer for part, okay. of, part of it. We can't design all those. They're, they're not formally designed. Right. And so before you can sit out to forbid, you got to have a set of construction documents that they can be at home. Right. And so that's where this is it's got to be picking an alternative. Uh, uh, so so are we going to choose an option where the water stays and the water goes away to, to seek bids on, or is it just going to be an option where there's no water? <laughs> That's, made that that's, that's part of what, what uh, but that's I'm why I'm this to you. Exactly. It seems like everything comes down to a dollar amount, which I understand. If you own a house, you own a car, you have kids, whatever, a family, then you understand everything comes down to a dollar amount. But what I'm asking and what I want to make abundantly clear so that there's no confusion to anybody <coughs> as to ownership, I'm not worried about that. That's not where I'm going. But... If we don't put this out for bid and we accept the numbers that are on the sheet that we were given when we came in and say, okay, this is what this is going to cost. There are construction companies out there that will do just as good work that don't cost as much. So are we going to narrow it down to one option and that's all that we're going to take bids on or are we going to have more than one option to take bids on and then go forward from there. I'm not saying take the cheapest, I'm not saying take the most expensive, but there's got to be a middle ground somewhere between you and us as well. I was going to ask the engineer a question. Yes, if this lake is drained, is there a fairly reasonably easy I say easy, but I know it takes understanding what you're going to wait for if the homeowners want to reconstruct a tank. Excuse me, please. And then let the lake fill back up and still stay under the Safe Dams Act. That's a good question. Um, you can breach the dam completely, remove the hazard downstream, the Safe Dams will deregulate it. They would say it's no longer a regulated dam, and then you as the homeowners could build it back to um, a level that is not regulated. So yes, that's correct. One other question. Um, even if we lower the dam, it's still a category one dam, correct? Even if the dam is lowered. It depends on how much you lower. Right. So if we, is there any way to backfill some of the water table? Like, Am I making sense? You understand what I'm asking? Right, so you're saying that to allow to some, some small pool of some sort in there, that what you're asking? Well, maybe certain areas don't need to be as deep as they are. Um, there, there is a way to, to, to keep a small pool or something. We don't know what that is because we have to study downstream what that breach zone would be. 
and we have to determine what we can lower the dam to. And then you can determine what that pool size could be. So maybe it is a five or six, seven, eight, whatever. You know, there could be a value there that we can come up with. Yes. But that would, that would make it not a category one. If we would the, lower below that level of the downstream hazard. Yes. Right. So an option could be making a shallower one. Correct. Okay. But Thank it wouldn't be it wouldn't go as far back up, you know, as it is now. So you got 14 acres or 16 acres of backs up way up in there. It wouldn't be that far back. But yes, there that could be an option alternative. There's, there's preliminary analysis of Because I didn't see that option on the sheet. It's not because we have to study more and then additional study downstream to determine what that would be. Thank you, sir. For me? Yes. Okay. You stated in your survey that the lake is currently at 140 acre feet. Mm -hmm. At the water line, at the normal pool. At the normal pool. And what would the lake have to be to get out of the category? Less than 100 acre feet at the top of the dam and less than 25 feet tall. <coughs> so if we would lower it to 100 acre feet or less, we also have to lower the dam. <coughs> My concern being with the fire service on the way we all fire department is uh, The city way the hall has taken over the community building and that station, we put a truck back out there. If we close that road and we get a call on that side, then that truck's got to go all the way around Melody Life Drive go out 208, back to the main entrance and come in. That'll take us at least four to six minutes to do that, okay? Or more, depending on what the conditions are. So that's that's our concern from that standpoint. It's way bigger than just draining the lake, maybe having a mud bog or whatever, but we still need that access for the deputies and the EMS to get back to those homes. There's, there's about 60 properties or more on the other side of that thing. And that's a what if that's liable to happen a whole lot quicker than the dam breaching. We've known about this since 2006, but so it's not imminent. What he's talking about could be imminent right now. It was 1990s and 80s when I was So I, I think we've come together, look at the options, and then figure out how we can go forward paying for it, because I think that's one of the major things. Plus, Andrew will be in in January. <coughs> And this will be our new representative, and he'll be on board. It's considered a non-emergency right now. Unusual event slowly developing. Is that correct? I'm sorry. From the from the emergency, the DAP. Yes. Non-emergency, unusual event slowly there, developing. There's no. That's what was in the report. There's no major issue currently with the dam. There's right. a look. Unless we get 16 inches of rain. There's a, six, there's a seepage issue or a settlement issue right. across the top. There is, there is something going on there. We don't know what that is. Right. Outside of that, there's no immediate issue. But if you get the big rain, that's what Sec Dan's worries about. They look right. at as a sunny day breach, and that dam just completely goes away right. with the weight of water. But street. we do have a little bit of time to put a task force together, see what our options are, to see if we could actually gain uh, some help money wise to offset some of the burden on the county and to also continue to keep the lake like it is for the community. That's our biggest concern is how that would affect the community. We're already late. Yeah, there are some time there are some time constraints there. Right. But as he said we're already late. I know there was a deadline to enter a report for uh, approval. We can't do anything until we get some type of approval or plan together. But I feel like if we talk to the state and tell them that we are working forward toward a plan together as a community and as a county, what's best for the families as well as the county, maybe they will take that into consideration and give us some time to try to work together to come up with the right plan for everybody. We understand the county don't want to bear that burden that's that's acceptable but maybe there's some things that we can do together to relieve some of that burden are y'all considering reforming the homeowners association we've been talking about it. yes ma'am in our past meeting <laughs> they have to get the approval from that because they're major property owners well on page 16 of 47 of the report that was put out it shows um four of the homeowners of melody lakes being property owners of the dam but it also lists Harry Lang and the Board of Commissioners as one of the owners. The major, major property, property owners. One of the owners of it. That's the way it's listed. Yeah. 
That's why we're under the impression that somewhere along yeah, the line, the listening. state has recognized not only the people that live there, but the county. Is, is that correct, sir? Court of the National Inventory of Downs report number GA well, I mean, that's what's in the report. Say. By the state, by, the, by EPD. Yes. That's correct. Those, that's are, what those are listed. That's what's listed on the EPD right. inventory right. dam papers. Yes. Yeah. That, that's because there is no homeowners association for the state to, right. to communicate with. Mm -hmm. it, so that's why they came to Harris County mm -hmm. uh, to make us aware of the situation with that dam. Right. Uh, and, and folks that are citizens that live there and citizens of yeah. Harris County. So that was how we ended up getting involved anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's why we started find, trying to find out more about what needed to be done mm -hmm. and the options we might have. Right. And on down that list, it still lists the old Melody Lakes Ranch Club, which has been gone forever. It's been but, um, you know, I think it would be nice moving forward if we could agree to work together, give us opportunity to, to form our association, to meet with the county and see what we can do moving forward. What do you think the timeline might be for y'all to form an association? Four months. We have to get everybody to four yeah. months. Yeah, because they just found this out a week ago. We don't have any time to get together. They gave them one. That's true. Can I ask the engineer? So they don't own it. They don't own it. Is the dam an imminent danger of breaching? No. So it's not a matter of we got to risk somebody's life if something doesn't happen immediately. We're just under pressure from the state. Is that you yeah. understand it right? That's correct. But you got to remember, the state doesn't look at it like that. They look at it like we can have that rain event tomorrow, oh, and that, that's the that's the way they look at it. So is there an imminent threat right now for the region? And for the for the for the commissioners, sorry, for the commissioners, how long has it been since? Melody Lakes Ranch Association paid any taxes. So what other entity in the county would you allow to go that long and not sell that property on the courthouse bills? I think Soul could got to the point people wouldn't buy it. That's lots. No, we're not talking about lots. I think he's referring to common, the common properties. I'm sorry. I think you're referring to the common right. properties. Common areas yeah. that are not associated with any one particular home. Uh, I mean, my taxes are paid. I know that, but I know there's a lot of property in there over the years that take the town that they don't. And there's been a lot of sales on the courthouse steps. So if you don't own the property, why are you letting it sit on the county tax record? Somebody want to buy it? Oh, this is a good question. I wrote it. I mean, so, so on one hand, you're showing me what you're being good people, and we're letting y'all have the label. We're not making you pay the taxes, and we're not selling it. And on the other hand, you don't want the responsibility. Well, I, the lakes, the I mean, I understand if you have a dam that you want to this kind of gray area. You know, I own this. Uh, I own the, the uh, asphalt deal. The first backhoe I bought. I called the insurance company and I said, I need to get insurance on my backhoe. The lady said, are you going to get in the dirt? I don't know. I thought I'd sit it out there in the yard. You know, all my neighbors have old cars. I'll sit the backhoe out there. No, ma'am, I'm going to dig in the dirt. Was it going to be more than six inches? Deep? And that's what this thing's turning into. You know, three inches. But you don't want anything to do with everything underneath it. And somewhere somebody and the, the county took this over. Regardless now of that, you know, the, the county, the state says the county is responsible. We're not, we're not saying, that it's opposite of what you're saying. The county is accepting responsibility for taking care of the dam. For the first that's, the, that's the point of the information that's been presented to you and the studies that the commission has had done. The county is accepting that. It's a matter of the lakes and the other property. The county doesn't own it. If you want the county to sell the lakes, somebody else could have come in and then, you know, talk about it. I would rather so just pay the taxes. It's been kind of nice. <laughs> here, here, here's my point about the tax sale of the lake. The people around the lake that they're talking about drinking, if they had the opportunity to purchase the lake at a tax, 
at a fair and honest, correct tax sale, and they purchased the lake. It would not now it's their decision. responsibility to the dam, is that correct? It's, no, I'm not coming. That's, that, that's a totally different issue. The ownership of the lake is totally separate from the, the dam issue. So if there was an active... So we can't buy the dirt under the road, is that <coughs> Or do no, we own it state, already the if you're a member of the association? The state has declared that the county has this responsibility. We would love to be able to give you back the road and yeah. the dam and all that. That would be these ways, sure. but uh, you know, you have I, I have questions like when when Harris County bought the meat property and then had to sell it, how much did we lose? Yeah. When there was a four lane that went because we because maybe a half a dozen really influential Political people kill a four lane that would have benefited thousands of people coming through the Wesley Hall. And, and when I look at what we're doing now, it makes about as much sense as that did, except that the ones that can will benefit, the ones that have political connections. There was a comment made about having a closed door meeting, which I'm totally opposed to. Is you need to shine a light on everything you people do because you're representatives of these people out here. We you do. are that's not. Why, why you are here. not our makers and our lords. And the meetings should be open. Yes. Yes. Everybody should be treated equal. If Every, you get treated equal and this don't go our way, hey. Sir, we are prohibited from it's the way my closed meetings except for three different subjects. I'm sorry. You're, you have a soft voice, and I wear your name, and I still can't hear you. That's okay. I also, I also have a paralyzed vocal cord, so that doesn't help. But um, we are prohibited from having closed mm -hmm. meetings, except for three different subjects. Yeah, there was All of the suggestion on this on this issue. I know that. No, sir. No, no, sir. Sir. No, sir. No, no, sir. No, so, no, I, I don't know where the suggestion sorry. came from. What I read was absolutely incorrect. Well, I don't okay. believe it came from anybody sitting at this table. May I also point out, you see the video camera over here. You can go online and see every meeting. I mean, we're that open because we want the citizens here. So that's, we, we feel like you do. It's just got to be open. This is not our goal. Yes, ma'am. My other questions have already been answered. My other questions have been answered already. Thank you. you come this up. One, we can't hear you back there. She said her question has been answered already. For some of the alternatives that leave, you know, the lake um, is gone, but we are considering, I had a stroke, I can't put words together too well. So every now and then you have these events that turn yards into freshwater creeks and raise creek levels up and lake levels up. Do each of these options cover <laughs> the eventuality of heaps of water coming through this at, at the same time that might overflow a lower dam or turn a stream without a dam into a concern for a lower lake. I hope I'm getting my point across. There's going to be some, if, you, if you've got a 15-inch rain in six hours, more than this dam would be affected. Somebody already said that, and that's true. So, upstream dam may breach, we don't know. Ski lake may breach, we don't know. Um, we know for a fact that Melody Lakes would not breach because that's what it would be designed on. Um, so, it would pass through, the water would pass through that, um, that system. So, each of these designs, whether it's no dam, no lake at all, there'll be a floodplain there just like any other stream has now. That, get a big rain of it, it, it goes to the floodplains and he gets out. Um, so the gentleman back here in the John Deere hat, he won't speak for a while. Two two quick points. Uh, there have been some mention of tax increases, something like that, you know, we do not pay our taxes. Our property out there is taxed at the same rate that the rest of the county is taxed at, right? Most every lot out there is 0.11 acres, and if you multiply that and do the division, that's $10,000 an acre. That would be a tax on mm -hmm. The houses may not be as nice as the rest of the counties, but I, I think the tax issue should not be an issue. And, and stated like it's in the paper where we don't pay our taxes, 
the property up there that's not being collected on it. Uh, the county commissioner's owns 22 lots out there that is exempt from paying taxes. <coughs> you can ask the lady on the end. I've been over to your office. How many times? That's the one thing I like. So I have to ask you. While while tax numbers and whatnot certainly might be available, this is not a tax number as far as the taxes that we get or don't get out of Melody Lakes. That is not coming into this at all. Uh, the EPD has come to us. Uh, we are trying to, to find out what options are. We frankly try to see if we couldn't have it abated somehow and it was, was there something that we could we could do. And, and that answer has been no. We, we have to address the problem. If we don't address it, they will. Uh, I, you know, I. That's why this meeting tonight. We want to hear from you folks, and, and I appreciate each of you that have said something tonight. And we certainly want to continue to hear what you have. Uh, we don't have any preconceived notion as to which way we're going to go. We thought it only fair to you, the homeowners, to be aware of at least the range and the scope of, of what it could cost or what it could do to your life um, and, and things of that nature. Do we need to find out more? I think been some good questions tonight and I think we do need to find out a little bit more. We need to talk about it. Uh, I think we, we certainly need to talk about it. You made a suggestion that uh, maybe you get a small group of y'all together that, that meets meets with us or, or meets with yourself first to, to come up with, with other questions and, and desires. Uh, that's what we want to do. Now, you know, we've got to, but the one thing that is a given, we have to do something. Right. So I, I'm willing to, to, to take a look at things. Uh, I do think so far the EPD has, has said yes, you're, you're working toward a conclusion, uh, and, and that's okay. You made some comment when it hadn't been te uh, tested in a while. They haven't inspected it in a while. That's not up to us to do. It's not something we or we order done. That's something that the state does. And if they chose not to come in and and take a look at that for a number of years, you know that's that's not our problem. I, I think we've heard some good things at this point in time, and I, I'm willing to take a look at it. Uh, um, I'd like to just ask the other commissioners. Just a consensus that if you would be willing to let them have 60 days to come to us with a with a solution or or what they can do or what their thoughts are about it. What you're yeah. capable of doing, yeah. What you're willing if to they do. they form a homeowner association, a homeowner association. Do we have that, a new? Do we have that kind of time? We can do that. We could we could certainly ask. I think that they would be willing to allow us to. Extend that. I'm certainly willing to do that. Can we get a longer extension to give us time to get things ironed out and look? I don't know that they give us formal extensions, but if they know we're working on something right. so far, they've been good about allowing us to go. go. And they knew we were doing the bathymetric study. They knew we had the engineers coming in to take a look at this and, and to give us some parameters to try and say what can be done. And these studies weren't free. No, no. we spent money trying we to don't. figure out what to do. What yeah, I talked with the Georgia State Dance Program on a couple of occasions, and they were uh, they were very informative and willing, and, and knowing, you know, that the county's working toward a resolution. And I told them, as a community, we are too, and we're hoping that we could reach out to the county and come together with our association and your committee. And, and get something resolved. In the PowerPoint presentation, there was a showing on the date y'all had listed that y'all had met yeah. about them. Uh, the first date listed was March of 17, no, February of 17, but the date listed as the state notified y'all about the day the condition of the dam was March of 17. So why were y'all meeting a month before the state notified you about the condition? There was an EAP required from EPD prior to. Emergency action plan that Carter Engineering performed prior to 
getting a letter that instigated the correction plan. Yeah, it, all, all Category 1 dam owners in the state were required to, to complete an emergency action plan. This is something that is many, many dams did not have. And, uh, and so that's what the gentleman over here was, from the fire department was talking about. That it, it lists what, happened, what you need to do as owners if that dam were nearing reach level or, or it just gives you a plan of attack. But so that was required first. But that was before the dam was affected. Yes, yes, so the dam like inspection is just a random, they don't, they, there's no, they, was nothing that? was triggered to say that that dam had to be inspected in March. It's just on their schedule. And prior to March 17th, the dam had not been inspected since 2007. Six. 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 2006. But every February 1 dam owner got the BAP request required to be at the same time. That they all of a sudden decided to start monitoring those a little more closely. In 2006, when it was inspected, were there any problems found with it at that time? Same. I think any recommendations? I think similar. Similar differences. Why three. wasn't anything acted upon in 2006? Say the mask. Say there's something happening. There was an inspection report that had deficiencies. And there, I think there were some trees. I'm, I'm just going to. So I'm not sure what was done then. To, I'm not sure but, but now they require more at this stage that they did not require at that stage. It's just based on what the state requires when. But whatever was made aware in 06. Nothing was followed up. That's not that's not quite true because I do know we had some of our road superintendent and those folks come in and clear trees and whatnot off of the dam. Uh, things that were within in the right of way from that dam. So they did clear that. There's nothing you could do about or could do at the, about seepage that was coming through at that point in time. Uh, but the trees we did do that as a camp. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of questions, if you don't mind. Them. So, if oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I thought you pointed me. My name is Valerie Bullock, and I've lived out in Melody Lakes for ten years. I'm a widow. I live alone, and I feel completely safe out there. I have to say that I only see a positive outcome to this issue because. If we're a, this is a very small percentage of the people that own lots out there. There are 999 lots plus 26, and you guys own 22. And if you would sell them to this man who wants to buy them, we <laughs> would be released from them. Okay, one thing. But if we were able to form a a homeowners association a landowners association that you would have, with the exception of my friend here, about 800 people involved in a membership of homeowners, many of which live out there, who could handle and be aggressive about some of the other problems. The dam is not the only problem. It's the drugs, it's the trash, it's the cars, it's the abandoned homes, it's the lots that are so high that you can't even tell that there's a dump back there. There's open garbage, there's dogs everywhere. We need to address those problems as well as the dam problem. So if we're able to form a homeowners association again, that's what we need to do, and then we can work together with you, and we'll have a lot of say, and you'll have a lot of say. And I am sure in the multitude of 900 lot owners, there are some very well-established people who can take on these projects, and we don't have to bother the county all the time. That's all I have to say. <coughs> Yes, sir. Well, if I could ask a couple of questions. So, the, the regulatory issue is, is Harris County's issue, correct? As far as the dam the size, the hydro engineering studies have been done. Uh, if the homeowners association is formed, 
is this not still Harris County's responsibility to address this dam, correct? I'm, 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 I'm not asking, yeah, go ahead. Sir, I'm not asking that you assume responsibility for it. I'm, I'm just kind of leading up to what if the homeowners association was formed? What's the cheapest route out on this dam? Reach the dam. Right. right. That's the cheapest route thus far, correct? So far, yes. Would Harris County be willing to take that money and put towards this homeowners association for these folks to fix their own problem? I don't know. Those kind of resources. I don't know if you can. You mentioned, or someone mentioned anyway, uh, homeowners association. Homeowners associations. I, I'm familiar with some of them in the county, and they have their dues, and their dues are to maintain and fix or advance whatever the homeowners want. Yes. If it's I, I, I mean, I know I, that homeowner associations where they do all the they do all the clearing of the dams, they, they, that kind of thing. So that that happens, and it would be up to your homeowners association to decide what you. I, I understand completely, but still, that doesn't release this council from the responsibility of addressing this in some way, shape, fashion, or form. Would 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 this be a federal regulated issue? Correct. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. I, I, I know what you That's there's. I think there's a final legal point that we we have to find out where, where that goes. How, how can we help each other? That's what yeah, I'm and that's what we want to try to do. I can tell you this: if this council does nothing, the EPD is going to come in and they're going to tear it down and they're going to build. I, I, I guess I don't know who they're going to build. Uh, and 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 the second thing. This council is saying that, that you do not own the streets, the roads, right? But if we breach these dams, this council is going to take step in and take over the land where the lakes are at. Is that we correct? don't want it. Will that be no. will that be Harris County all we, the land? No, we do not want to own the land. That, that, it's, not, it's a subdivision, right? And it's if there's any ownership. I mean, one of the questions we ask of, of attorneys, and that's how we know that the pro your property lines and the folks that live on the lake only go up to the to the high water line or some water line of the lake. Uh, because we looked at that too. Because if you were to breach it or lower it, would that increase the property? Uh, but no, it's not. So, and I don't know, have not been able to find or I, and look at the former homeowners association bylaws. Did the folks that don't live on the lake have the right of enjoyment for those lakes as far yes. as yes. Come, coming to fish there and uh, yes. certainly bring grandkids or kids there? Uh, so, you know, if so, then the homeowners association certainly has a vested interest. Uh, no, I we, we want a solution too. That's why we really bring it to you. I guess what I'm trying to pull out of this council is some form of support. I Whether it be equipment, a few pieces of concrete pipe, a backhoe, uh, and but but the first thing in a capital project is you've got, you you've already done the engineering on the hydro studies, right? The, the first thing is make a decision what's going to happen, what what we want to see happen. Make a decision, and then we've got to get the architectural drawings for the weirs, right? And we got to get the scope of work for the contract, and 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 then we can possibly sit down and decide on which end of the spectrum, who is going to do what steps in these scope of work. That's it, it can be done together. That's a fair question, and I think I think generally there is a consensus, certainly among the commission, we're willing to give you and, some time. If, and six, if, the if we can buy 60 out. days, great. If it has to be... And if you could help us out, take care of the architectural. I think we'd like for y'all to be first and get you, wrap your heads and hands and everything around it right. as to you know, what is acceptable or you know, minimally acceptable or what, and come to us, and then I think we'll be more than happy to sit down and talk with you and see, I mean, uh, as, as to what we may or may not be able well, to do. Well, you kind of scared us in the beginning. You, you scared us in the beginning when, when we kind of took it as we are assuming nothing. <laughs> well, we, we don't bring any other subdivision other than, yeah. you know, we, we maintain the roads if, if we own the roads. That well, we, we do. We just ask you uh, but then, you know, what, what utility services, those kind of things. But no, we do not do that for, for any other subdivisions. And, uh, 
So it, it would be fraught with some difficulties that we would have to look at as far as it's down the road with others. But I think we're willing to at least take a look at it and see and give you the answers you need as to if the county is willing to do something, what is the county willing to do? At least you would have that. If it's, if it's zero, then it's zero. If it's a million dollars, then it's a million dollars. It won't be a million dollars. <laughs> anyway, uh, Does the county collect any right taxes from uh, the company or anything out there in the Lakes? Mm -hmm. Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right of way taxes? Right of way taxes. Mm -hmm. The George Power or the utility? Yeah. 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 Uh, is, are there any taxes associated with it? Cable TV. Cable TV. And they'll bond so y'all have to pay all that. They just have easements. Yes, ma'am. Um, worst case scenario, after God came through the Stan Bridge people were able to do something. Is there a fine uh, coming about that? The worst thing that can happen would be it's a liability issue. If someone dies, they can always sue. So who are they going to sue? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 so the homeowners association that don't exist. The yeah. so yeah. county that don't own the road. We have this grace period of being able to decide. Tail the wings of If we felt yeah. like that it was an immediate hazard today, we would make sure that everyone would be come to us uh, with the blessing of all the other residents out there to, to sit down and talk about what we may or may not be able to do and what you may or may not be able to do. And I think that's fine and if you want to, uh, 60 days, if you think we can do that, uh, today is October the 1st, so that will be right at the end of November. It's right around Thanksgiving, but I would say certainly right around that point in time, be prepared to come back we will set up a meeting uh, won't be part of the commission meeting but we'll set it as a separate just for this issue and you come back and then we will sit down and hopefully we will have some some of the answers to some of those final legal points at that point in time we'll move forward with that and see if, see what we can do that it, it might be workable for, for so the, the county as well. October the 16th is that kind of pushed back then what they were going to yes, discuss at that meeting yes ma'am thank you that would definitely be pushed back. Is there is there one point of contact that we could have if or or know to, who to go to? There, there. There. I'm sorry. I said I asked if there's one point of contact. I figured it was going to be you. <laughs> but if there's one point of contact that we could have, just to get answers to you, I set the meetings with you, and, and so that you can communicate. You're it. It has to be fair. Everybody else works. <laughs> Can you get ready to make him work? <laughs> okay. Ms. McMichael says she has an email for you. We've got your contact information. Do we have your. Yes. Uh, Becky does, I know. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I, I communicate with Martha and Mrs. Carmine. Okay. Ron, what, what, 
process to make sure EPD is aware of what I'll, we're doing. I'll, I'll call them. Okay, would you do that and just get back to us? And, and if they balk at anything uh, or time frame, let us know. I'll, I'll let us know. Okay. If I could just say, um, this has been a, this has been difficult for me, and I'm sure it's been difficult. I can't speak for the other committee. But this is your home, just as you said. And I have agonized for a long time over what we should do. Because it is your home. But I don't think there's, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you will. I don't think there's anybody 